This is one law that I have really learned to love. Now I paid a big price before I learned it, but when I did learn it, my whole world changed. And you know, it wasn't until I had studied this material for some time that this law made sense. Let me read you something here that scientists have given to us. These are very bright people. You must understand that 90% of all the scientists that ever lived are alive today. Scientists accept the truth that the body of a human is moved by the mind. That all its functioning is governed by a ruling thought. Whether that thought is subjective or objective. Whether it's conscious or unconscious. Those who study the mental processes find that all the conditions of the body are created and caused by the mind. It is known that creation in and every form is governed by and subject to a law. Hence, when one misuses, inverts, or violates a law, this mistake is called a sin. This is interesting. A sin is a mistake a misunderstanding, and a misjudgment. A mistake is falling short of or disobeying the law, whether that law be mechanical or spiritual. Correction is the only method of adjustment or of appeasing the law. Thus, repentance and forgiveness are the only means available to alter and correct that mistake. I'm Bob Proctor, and I want to talk to you about the law of forgiveness. Now, for a long time, I never understood this. Sin is truly transgression of the law. Now, when I was a little boy, I was sent to Sunday school, like a lot of little boys that grew up in the part of the world where I grew up. And um, if I didn't go, my older sister would tell. And so I was punished when I didn't go. Now... I also learned that if I said this word or that word, it was a sin. And I was taught that the price of sin was death. Now, I thought that was rather severe, but that's what I grew up with. That was the idea that this little boy learned at a very early age. Now, I was a curious kid. And I was told if I said this or if I did that, it was a sin. And again, the price of sin was death. Well... I thought, I think I'm going to take a bite out of this apple. And I sit it, and I didn't die. And I thought, aha, I think I'll try this. And I did it, and I didn't die. In fact, it was fun. So I thought, that mustn't be true. But you know, later on in life, as I started to learn the truth about how the universe operates, the laws, I found out it was true. It was my understanding or perception of what these people were telling me. And that was probably the problem. And it probably was even further than that. It's because of their intention of what they were saying. Because I think I was getting what they were saying to me. Well, you see, there's a very basic law of life. And that law says create or disintegrate. We're going ahead or we're going back. Now, disintegrate doesn't mean that you're just going to disappear. You know, when we talk about live or die, that doesn't mean that our heart's going to stop and the blood stops flowing and we're either, you know, incinerated or placed in the ground. That doesn't have what that means. It means that we're either going ahead or we're going backwards. That means things are getting better or they're getting worse. If we violate the law, the price of sin is death. means things are going backwards. Things are not going to be as good as we want them to be. If we live in harmony with the law, we're going to go ahead. So do you see, sin is transgression of the law. Price of sin is you're going to go backwards. Live in harmony with the law, you're going to go ahead. Now, forgiveness is a phenomenal concept. I never used to think much of it. I thought, forgive, you know, what's it mean? It means let go of completely, abandon, 
Forgive yourself. You can't change what you did. Do you know there's many people who wander around with great feelings of guilt? Guilt is a very, very, guilt and resentment are two of the most destructive emotions that you'll ever come up with. I was raised with guilt. Now, I've been telling people for years, if it gets to a point where you can't handle a problem that you've got, you should go to a professional. Well, it's like the guy said, I like a chef that'll eat his own cooking. I was raised with guilt, and so I experienced a lot of guilt, and I was having difficulty getting rid of it. And any little thing I did that, you know, uh, that I just didn't think was right, I would have great guilt over it. So I went to a psychiatrist in Southern California, in Century City. And I only went to that psychiatrist three or four or five times, I guess. And I was on my way down the last time that I went, and I realized I didn't have to go anymore. And uh, I phoned him and I said that I wasn't coming. He said, well, come on down anyway, because I like what you're doing. I want to find out more about what you're doing. And he, um, he was able to help me get rid of the guilt. It was all a simple concept of forgiveness. Forgive means to let go of completely. Let it go. Forgiving is a very healthy concept. We've got to learn to forgive ourselves. We've got to forgive others. We have to realize that what we did yesterday, we cannot change. If you did something deliberately wrong, let it go. Forgive yourself. If you did it and you didn't do it deliberately, forgive anyway. Let it go. If someone else has done something to you, don't hold any resentment. Let it go. Now, that doesn't mean that you want to go and give them an opportunity to do it all over again. You may move away from that. But you cannot hold bad thoughts in your mind and move in a good direction. Listen to something else that Hollywell brought it out here. He said, a noted physician talking before a group of other medical people on this very subject of thought being the source of disease was recorded as having said in his concluding remarks, abnormal tumors and cancers are due to a long period of suppressed grief and anxiety. Another way of saying that such diseases are due to a lot of sinful thoughts getting bottled up and suppressed within our minds. If this state is so destroying, it might be wise for us to probe into our own selves and note the effect our emotions have upon the physical organism. Then let us seek by every means at our command to overcome and abandon and forsake every emotional tug that has a debilitating and disturbing effect. Do you know, that's such excellent advice. Do you know, if you go way back, you found out we're just absolutely ridiculous. A lot of bad blood comes from wrong thinking. Try and understand this. Everything works from a higher to a lower potential. When you're dealing with electricity, you must work from a higher to lower potential. We don't even know what electricity is, but we do know the laws by which it operates. If you want a greater flow of electricity, put in a bigger bulb, get a bigger transformer. The only limit placed on electricity is the limit that's placed on the form through which it's flowing. Well, it's exactly the same with us. We work from a higher to a lower potential. We go from the thought to the thing. Spirit always manifests through its polar opposite. You go from the non-physical to the physical. You and I have the ability to tap into a non-physical world, a world of thought. And we can choose our thoughts. We can choose any thoughts we want. Do you know, Viktor Frankl was a Viennese psychiatrist, spent the war years in a uh, concentration camp. And he said it was while he was in the camp that he realized that regardless of the physical or intellectual abuse that he was subjected to, no one could cause him to think something he didn't want to think. Do you know that's where attitude begins? Attitude is the composite of our thoughts, which cause our feelings, which express in actions. See, our thoughts, feelings, and actions, when they're all in sync, that's an attitude. But we want to have the proper attitude, and we're going to live in a healthier body. We want to have the proper attitude, and we're going to enjoy the wealth that we look for. We want to enjoy the proper attitude, and we're going to have the friends that we want. But one basic concept, is that you have to forgive yourself and you have to forgive others. You see, guilt and resentment are without question two of the most destructive emotions that anybody can experience. Of all the laws that you're going to study, 
This could be one of the most liberating of all of them. Forgiveness. Letting go of. Abandon. Just let it go. And when it comes back into your mind, let it go again. Form the habit of not holding on to anything that's causing you to feel bad. Start to love yourself. Start to respect yourself. Have a healthy respect for what you're capable of doing. And understand this. Carrying bad thoughts about anyone or anything is not doing anyone any good. It's sinful. It's destructive. And the price of sin is death. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to bury you. But it may be burying your company. It may be burying your income. It may be burying your friends. Because they won't want to see you. Forgiveness, it's going to cause everything to grow. It's going to cause you to be healthier. It's going to cause your income to grow, your friends to grow, your business to grow. Forgive. It's a beautiful law. Forgive means to let go of completely, abandon, replace the thought with one of beauty, with one of plenty, with one of abundance. You'll be glad you did. I did it. I'm a happy, healthy, wealthy guy. And you know something? Lots of energy. It just flows freely to and through me. I forgave me and everyone else that occupied a bad place in my mind. You do the same. The law of forgiveness could be one of the greatest laws you study. This is Bob Proctor. Thank you. If we look to the answer as to why for so many years we achieved so much, prospered as no other people on earth, it was because here in this land we unleashed the energy and individual genius of man to a greater extent than has ever been done before. Freedom and the dignity of the individual have been more.